Okay, so we just saw how the hypothalamus causes the anterior pituitary gland basically to release its hormones, right? So here we have the anterior pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary gland is going to make seven different hormones, and each of those have to be triggered by a hypothalamic hormone in order to be, uh, in order to release that hormone. Okay, so we can say for the anterior pituitary gland, this is what's going to happen. Like overall, and then we'll go over the hormones, just so we have this one down one more time. Okay, so we're going to have an Rh hormone that gets released into the hypophysial portal vein. Right, it's going to travel down the hypophysial portal vein. When it gets to the anterior pituitary gland, essentially it's going to target the anterior pituitary gland, and the anterior pituitary gland is going to release its own hormones into the cavernous sinus. That's exactly what's going to happen, all right? So you have to have a hormone that's going to tell the anterior pituitary gland what hormone to release or what hormone to stop releasing. The inhibiting hormones are less important. The releasing hormones are much more important. Okay, so the anterior pituitary gland has two different types of hormones it can release. It can release non-endocrine targets. We'll start there. Non-endocrine targets means the hormone that gets released from the anterior pituitary gland does not target another endocrine gland to release a gland or to release a hormone, excuse me. So one of those is growth hormone. Actually, let's start with the easiest one first. One of those is called melanocyte stimulating hormone. So essentially you're gonna have an RH hormone from the hypothalamus. It's going to target the anterior pituitary gland and the anterior pituitary gland is gonna release a hormone called melanocyte stimulating hormone. Okay, so this one has an abbreviation of MSH and essentially you have to understand, okay, when MSH goes into the cavernous sinus, what is it gonna do? Okay, sorry, I don't, my picture's in the way here, so I'm just gonna kind of go like that. So MSH targets melanocytes. I mean, it's in its name. Half of these things are in its name, you guys. So it stimulates them, it, it actually targets the melanocytes in skin. Okay, and then the melanocytes have to have an effect. Or they have to do something as a result. What the melanocytes do is they make and secrete more melanin. So essentially, your skin becomes darker. Okay, so overall, like, what's the what's the stimulus here to release the RH hormones? It's light. More light actually tells the hypothalamus to release a releasing hormone to target the anterior pituitary gland to make more melanin so your skin gets darker. Okay, that's one. The next one is going to be another easy one. This is prolactin. So we're going to have a releasing hormone that targets the anterior pituitary gland that's going to tell us to release prolactin. Okay, prolactin's abbreviation is PRL, I believe. So prolactin, prolactin targets mammary glands. Basically, breast tissue, okay? And then the mammary glands have to do something as a result, they have to have an effect. Essentially what that effect is, is milk production. Okay, so remember, prolactin causes the production of milk, whereas 
oxytocin causes the ejection of breast milk. So see, you have, they have different effects, even though they have the same target. The third one that is a non-endocrine target is going to be growth hormone, okay? So we're going to see that we're going to have a specific releasing hormone. This is called growth hormone releasing hormone. I know, very smart or kind of stupid. I don't know, depends. But you have a releasing hormone, okay, that comes from the hypothalamus. What is the stimulus that causes growth hormone releasing hormone to be released, that's not important right now. Let's not worry about that. But we have a hormone that causes our anterior pituitary gland to release growth hormone. Okay, this is GH. GH is gonna have multiple targets. So one of those targets is muscle cells. What do muscle cells do? They get bigger. Remember, you can't actually increase the number of muscle cells. You can only make them bigger in size. The other one is it's going to target bone cells. And in this case, we can increase the number of bone cells. Because bone cells can actually go continue to go through um, cell division or, or mitosis. It also targets the liver. And in this case, the liver is going to help us with metabolizing sugar. It's gonna help us with metabolism. So, we're, so I'm just gonna make it a little bit more simplified is the liver is gonna help us increase metabolism. Essentially, if you're gonna grow, your cells need sugar. So you need the liver to help you with making sure that you have enough sugar in blood and then also, if you, have, you don't have enough sugar in blood, you increase blood sugar levels. Remember, that's a totally different thing than insulin. Insulin then also has to be released so that you can absorb that sugar, okay? Lots of things have to go on in order for you to use sugar in your body. So it's growth hormone, okay? Growth hormone is going to make you grow. It's going to help a little bit with metabolic processes as well. Those are non-endocrine targets. And then we have four endocrine targets. Okay. All right, let's go through like the easier ones first and then maybe I'll put the other ones on the other videos, but I don't wanna confuse you guys too much. So the first one is that we're gonna have GNRH, GNRH. This is gonadotropin releasing hormone, okay? You have to know that one. Gonadotropin releasing hormone targets the anterior pituitary gland. And when it targets the anterior pituitary gland, the anterior pituitary gland is going to make two hormones. One is called follicle stimulating hormone. Better known as FSH, okay? The other one is called luteinizing hormone. Also known as LH, okay. Both of these have the same target, okay. I'm just going to erase this stuff over here to give myself a little bit more room. Because I'm gonna run out of room here in a minute, okay. So both of these actually target gonads. It's just that what the gonads do as a response differs a little bit. So they target the ovaries and they target the testes, okay? Essentially, follicle-stimulating hormone is gonna cause ovaries and testes to make sex cells. Luteinizing hormone causes ovaries and testes to make sex hormones. So I'm just gonna kind of do this because I wanna go through my picture essentially. And I want you to see that what's gonna happen here. We're gonna go over this in, in way more detail when we get to reproductive system, but we can just say sex cells and sex hormones for now. Okay, those are the effects of FSH and LH. They have far more complicated effects that we'll see later. Okay, 
Number two. And I should put number one and I should put number two right there. Sorry. Because then you're going to be like confused. FSH and LH are two different hormones. Okay. So the third hormone, we're going to see that we're going to have a releasing hormone. Let's not worry so much about what that releasing hormone is. Targets the anterior pituitary gland. And the anterior pituitary gland is going to make something called thyroid stimulating hormone. Sorry, my handwriting got like real crazy right about there. I'm sitting on a desk like this big, so I don't have a whole lot of room. Okay, so this is TSH. So in some books, it's just called TH, but we're going to call it TSH. Okay, essentially what thyroid stimulating hormone does is it targets the thyroid. Yay, it's in its name. And then the thyroid in turn produces hormones, right? This is the whole idea. These are endocrine targets. The effects should be the production of hormones right here. It's a little more complicated than that, but thyroid gland makes T3 and T4, okay? So one is thi thioxanine and the other is tri triiodothionine, I believe, something like that. But basically T3 and T4, okay? And we're just going to continue it out. T3 and T4, what are they going to target? They primarily target body cells. They increase metabolism. Excuse me. We're going to go over what T3 and T4 do in, in more detail. But if you need like the whole thing, what's going to happen, okay? So the fourth hormone here, we're going to see that we have a releasing hormone. It targets the anterior pituitary gland. And then it causes something called adrenocorticotropic hormone to be released. This one is ACTH. It's abbreviation. Okay, ACTH targets just the adrenal cortex. The adrenal cortex then releases aldosterone and cortisol. And just to make it really easy, because I don't have a whole bunch of room, both of these are going to help us with long-term stress. They do specific things, but we're going to look at those in detail in when we look at the um, the adrenal gland, okay? So now you can see what the anterior pituitary gland does. Remember, releasing hormones go into the hypophysial portal vein, and those are made by the hypothalamus, okay? So the hypothalamus makes releasing hormones, it goes into the hypophysial portal vein, then gets sent towards the anterior pituitary gland and tell the anterior pituitary gland what to do, okay? To release a hormone. And then those hormones the anterior pituitary gland releases have different targets and different effects. You should know all of that. 